So settling your body comfortably on your chair, using whatever supports you need. Have your feet firmly placed either on the floor or on a, a block or cushions, whatever you've got available. And then if it helps, you could either rest one hand on the midriff navel, one hand on the upper chest, or simply both hands lower down and allow the breath to move towards the base of your lungs first. So if you have both hands on, you're allowing the breath to travel towards your lower hand as you breathe in and then fill to your upper hand. Don't worry if it doesn't happen immediately. Give yourself time for it to begin to happen. And as you breathe out, you could invite the abdominals to move back first and then the upper chest to empty. So we're filling bottom to top and emptying bottom to top but allow your breath to do what it can do. Often with the touch of the hands, it can encourage the body to move towards that place. And if we emphasize the drawing back of the abdominals lightly, that helps us to push the breath out and helps to empty the lungs. And when we've emptied the lungs, we invite them to fill. Bringing in all that energy and vitality. So as the air seems to be being taken away from us sometimes and we find it hard to breathe, we feel trapped, then we have the possibility, we have the tools with which to deepen our breath. And you might like to take your hands and, and have your, your fingers and thumbs out, so they're as if they're, they're that, and then placing the fingers against the bottom ribs and the thumbs just go round the back slightly, if that's comfortable for your shoulders. And you're able to probably just feel those bottom ribs. And as you breathe in, you may experience them going out wide as well as forward and backwards. So it's as if your hands are driven away by your breath. And then as you breathe out, they'll sink back down. If you find that uncomfortable, then the hands could just rest either side of the midriff. This, this gesture, Kanishta Sharira Mudra, is is designed to assist you in, in breathing there. And then if you place the thumbs a bit higher up, sort of near your armpits, but not necessarily in them, and the fingers and the hands are, a point, are facing down, so it's as if you're patting. The fingers aren't touching except the first finger, first finger and thumbs. Relax the shoulders and allow yourself to breathe with the hands there. And this will encourage the breath more into the middle of the chest. Thumbs in the base of the armpit. One more breath. Now to get to the very upper chest, there are a couple of ways we can do it. We can either take the hands, palms flat, and place them on the back of the shoulders, top of the shoulders, with the elbows up. If that's uncomfortable for your arms and that's a struggle, then you can make a fist with your hands and bring your thumbs to touch. So your two thumbs touch and they can rest down. And that will actually bring it to the same place. So it's either make a fist and thumbs together, touching, or hands up at the back. Whichever you find is most comfortable for you. And because we're breathing into the very upper part of the chest, the breath is usually much shorter and softer. 
So it's not a place we can force the breath or we should not force the breath. One more breath there. And releasing the hands, letting them go. And if you place the thumbs inside the fist, if that's comfortable, so you've got a, a fist with the thumbs in, and turn the palms up so the fingers are pointing up towards the ceiling, and bring your knuckles to rest against each other. And this is Brahma Mudra, and this allows us to breathe deeply, fully. We hold it probably by the midriff or navel. You can once again perhaps bring your awareness to those abdominals and as you begin to breathe out, feel as though you're drawing back from the base through the middle, through the upper, and then emptying the rest of the chest. And bringing the palms of your hands together. Feel that connection between your right hand and your left hand. We've brought them together to make one. One gesture, two hands. And this gesture of reverence, Anjali Mudra, invites the breath around the heart space. So take a moment to consider yourself. Sometimes we may feel alone, but if we add another L into that, we're all one. So even though we may feel alone, we are actually together. So we may now, though we're not in the same room, we're in a room together, we're working together, breathing together, we're all one. And we use our practice, our yoga practice, to maintain ourselves, our body, our mind, and our breath. So when you're ready, taking your hands, as you breathe in, stretch them forward some wide. As you breathe out, turn the hands away as far as you can. So you're rotating those arms backwards. As you breathe in, turn the palms to face forwards or turn them up towards the sky. And as you breathe out, rotate the arms and turn the hands away from you as far as they'll go, rotating the whole arm. Breathing in, bringing them back, palms up. As you breathe out, Bending the elbows, bringing them up, palms together, and hands on top of your head if you can. Take a breath there. And then breathe in and lift your hands as high as you can. And then have one hand facing forward, one hand facing back. And as you breathe out, bring your hands down towards your hara, your dantian. Taking your right arm, breathe in and look at it as you turn your arm to the right. Breathe out and breathe in. Take the left arm and turn to look to the left arm. Breathe out. Breathe in, lift the arms up high. And as you breathe out, draw those palms back down to your heart. So we'll take that one more time, opening both arms, palms up, breathing in, turning the palms around and down and back, breathing out, breathing in, palms up, shoulders rotated back, breathing out, shoulders rotating forwards. Breathe in, shoulders rotating down and back. 
Breathe out, bring the hands together on top of the head. Breathe in, stretch the arms up, turn one palm forward, one palm back, and breathe out, roll them back down. Breathing in to the right. Breathe out. Breathing in to the left. Breathe out. Breathing in to the center. And as you breathe out, bring the arms up and all the way down. And give the body a little shake, wriggle and roll. Well done. All right, so we're going to bring our awareness to our spine now. Begin to move that gently and appropriately. You may choose to uh, remove your block or support for your feet if you need to, or shuffle your body forward a little on your chair so you have more room behind you for your spine to move. We're going to bring our awareness back to that idea of, of, of buttons, if you like, from your forehead, chin, chest, navel, down the bottom, and feel that those buttons are initially spaced and you're upright. And then the hands can be placed on your thighs near the tops of your legs if you wish. And as you breathe out, hinging from the tops of the legs, keeping those buttons separated as far as you can go forward. Press down through the floor as you breathe in and bring yourself back up. Think of carrying a book on top of your head all the time as you breathe out, leaning forwards gently. And breathing in, push through those feet, come back up. Two more times, working with your own breath going only as far as your back feels comfortable doing. So remembering that this way, without rounding the back, is generally safe for most backs, even if there is some deterioration between the vertebrae. And when you've completed, pausing, and you might slide your hands towards the end. And we can use the legs if we want to here, the hands and the arms, and the arms become our stability. And we aim to keep the arms straight. We're looking for as much movement in the spine as we can find. So as we allow the spine to move forward, and we're looking at opening the front of the spine, we could perhaps put the fingertips at the bottom underneath our knees and use those to draw the body forward. So the pelvis tilts forward, the navel comes forward, the chest opens and lengthens, and possibly the head looks up a little bit. And then to go in the opposite direction, we could push the wrists down on top of the knees and draw the pelvis back, the navel back, the chest heart back, and the chin can tuck. So we're breathing in and using the fingers at the front to draw the body forwards and lengthen. As you breathe out, push with your wrists and send your spine backwards. Breathing in, allow the spine to move forwards. Breathing out, navel back towards spine and sending it back. So this is our cat cow on the chair, breathing in. Breathing out. One more time in each direction. You can use your ujjayi. Working with your body. And when you've completed, draw yourself comfortably back to your center. Checking in, noticing how the body feels, what's going on there. And then if it's appropriate, if you're able to, bring your feet and your knees together. If you can't get them together, don't worry, just as close as they will go. And then taking your left hand, if you're able to, either on the outside of your right leg or anywhere that you can reach safely and let the right arm hang down for a moment. Sit beautifully tall up through the crown of your head and bring your awareness to those bottom ribs. So we had the hands when we were doing the breathing first. And take those round a little to the right. 
And then bring your awareness to the chest where you had your hands in the second position and turn that round to the right. And then think of your shoulders and turn them to the right. And finally, you can allow your head to turn. If you want to, the back arm, the right hand can hold onto your chair and you'll rotate it around and you're breathing. One more breath here. And as you breathe in, breathe out, let the head, the shoulders, the ribs, the lower ribs come back. And observing your body, how that feels. Noticing perhaps the different sensations on the two sides of the body. And then taking your other hand, your right hand on the outside of your leg. Allow the left hand to dangle, or you can hold on to the chair. Feel that you're once again balancing a book on your head, and you're going to move the bottom area of the ribs, then the upper area of the ribs, then the shoulders, then the head, neck. So in your own time, breathe in. And as you breathe out, it's bottom ribs. Stay there, breathe in. As you breathe out, higher ribs, breastbone. Breathe in. As you breathe out, shoulders travel you round and maybe the head's already going. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, the head goes round. And we hold there and you're breathing. If your body invites you to, you can turn just a little more with your neck, your head, your shoulders, your chest, whatever will move. Almost as if somebody has their hand on the right side of your back and is gently encouraging your back to move around. Then one more breath in, and as you breathe out, release the head, the shoulders, the chest, the lower ribs. Deep breath in. Sigh the breath away. Notice the effects of your rotation. So rotating helps to limber up and keep the vertebrae mobile. Most of the ver vertebral rotation is either the neck, which has the most, or the thoracic spine, which is where your ribs join onto the spine. That lumbar area at the back and from the waist down, not very much rotation at all, and we want to avoid over-rotating that. So that's why we began here with our sense of rotation and then here. here. And hopefully that felt a little more stable. Okay. So moving the feet a little bit apart again. And we could work a little bit through the feet. So we're going to come up to stand to do that. But before we cart to stand, we have to find our feet. So you might want to use your feet and just bang the floor a little bit, provided there's nobody underneath you that's <laughs> going to get really irate. And feel that power in your legs. Feel those thighs moving. And if you are feeling strong, you can lift them a little higher. Do a little more marching on the spot. Can I control those legs? Do I need a little bit of action here? And then pausing. Observing the buzzing, any buzzing of energy flowing around your legs. And we want to teach ourselves to come up strongly through from the earth, through the legs, using the power of the body and come up to the best of our ability without using hands. Sometimes we, we use our hands on our legs if there's no chair or the arms of the chair or the seat of the chair and we use our upper body to push us up. But actually we can use the earth to push us up, as you know. So we're going to push down through the floor, lean forward slightly and come up. Now make sure you're not too far away from your chair and shuffle back a tiny bit and then fold forwards a little bit, find your buttocks and sit down again. Very good, okay. So power down through the earth, lean forward until you feel your bottom coming off and then carry on going up. Very nice, and when you're ready, lean forward till you feel your bottom going down and then sit yourself quietly down. We're going to stand up and sit down two more times. Push, lift, pause, check in, forward, 
sit. So you have to use those. Right. Now be careful of your knees as you're coming down and forward. Where's the best place for my feet? Push down, sit down, up. Fold to sit down. Very good. And obviously the lower a chair is, the harder this is to do. Checking in with yourself for a moment. I'm making this a daily practice, so every opportunity you can, you stand up out of a chair, one that's safe to do so without using your hands. There are chairs, there are sofas and things which it's ridiculous and they're so low or they're so squishy that we can't. I mean, we need to be safe, so we use the props we've got, which are our arms usually, and we help ourselves up. And you know that, that that's the safe thing to do. But when they're not required, let's use the power of our body and keep that strength. So this time we're coming up to stand and we're gonna stay standing. So you just power down through, and then you can come around and stand behind your chair. I'm gonna turn my chair to the side so that I've got a more visual for you. Let's move my block out of the way. I'm gonna trip over it. And you can have your hands placed lightly on the back of the chair if you find you wish to have them, require them, or don't need to use it if it's not necessary. We're going to begin with a calf stretch. So from where we are, you might want to put one foot forward a little bit and then the other foot back and you're dropping the heel down slightly out towards that side rather than sometimes when we put the foot, it tends to turn in a bit. So think of that foot as being in a straight line. Think of the pelvis being in a straight line, facing forward to the chair and the bit of pressure down through that back heel to get that stretch in your calf. Keep breathing as you're pressing. And then when it feels appropriate, if you wish to, keeping that heel down, soften your knee on that leg. Back leg, soften the knee, and that changes the stretch around the calf area, down into the heel, and gives you a different stretch. So we're holding that. It doesn't matter how far the knee bends, the heel stays down, and your breath is flowing. And straightening that leg and stepping it forward changing over so you may want to have that foot you just done forward a bit take the other foot back to the safe distance for you where you begin to feel that stretch have a little look see if that heel is behind the middle second toes pelvis is still facing the front use the chair for balance as you require and pushing that heel down safely and appropriately into the floor. Find your breath, glance straight forwards if you can here, rather than looking down. And if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, it's really useful to be looking up a little bit. Maybe look up safely for your neck, feel the feet even though they're apart, and whether you can lift one hand off the chair or even both hands off the chair, you feel very dizzy and it's not safe, don't do that. And then if it's possible with the hands off, lower your gaze back to straight ahead and hands can come back if they want to. So back leg, bending the knee now, moving the stretch into the other sides of the calf or either side of the calf. And you can use your support or not, depending on how strong you're feeling. Of course, if you don't use hands on the chair, then we're building that strength through the body through the torso, through the legs. Bend that knee a tiny bit more if it's willing to. So it's not about the knee, it's about the calf. And then stretching and releasing back to where you started. And rearranging your feet. Working with that idea of balance, we're going to do a little lifting up onto our toes. So be the right distance from your chair. It allows you to, as far as possible, take your body straight up. So we aren't doing it leaning forwards or falling backwards. We're simply aiming to go straight up. And some of that will need to come from the center of your body as your powerhouse. You can use a few fingertips on the chair to keep you balanced and safe. 
And of course, if anybody has issues with their ankles or anything like that, that's not safe to do this practice, then you may want to simply stay where you are and you could go into some little bending knees, stretching calves, or alternate up onto toes if you are unable to do both together. So feel free to do that. So let's begin with alternates to set that in motion. So we're going to lift the right heel off the floor, bend as far as we can into those toes. Think of pressing your ankle forwards. Drop it down, change sides. Breathe in, push down, breathe out, lift off. Breathe in, drop one heel down, breathe out, lift off. One more time each side. And then for those who feel it's able to, up onto both toes and down. Breathe in, breathe out. Or you could continue with the alternates. Three more times. Feel the power, push down through the floor to go up, lift up through your pelvic floor and pause, well done. And then bending those knees forward a little bit just to both of them, heels down, just to give those calves a bit of a stretch. So from there, if you're happy to, you can hold on to your chair and walk back a little bit. So you're slightly leaning forwards to your chair. And if you have a chair, I've got a chair with, with steps down, so I could move my hands down, but you could also move your hands down the sides of the chair if you want to go further down. So from here, we're simply bending both knees a tiny bit forward. And we're gonna keep those knees bent, and you may find that you want to walk further back with your, your body, and we're gonna push your, our sit bones, keeping those knees bent, push our sit bones, pelvis out behind us. So you, your elbows might end up bending, if you want your arms straight, you can either take them lower or move your body or your chair further forward or away from each other. And then lengthen by keeping those knees bent. Send those knees away. So your abdomen is coming to rest near your thighs and your breastbone is moving forward and the crown of your head is heading towards the back of your chair. Breathe, stretch through both sides of the spine and it may not feel the same in both sides. Then slowly walk your way up either with your hands or press down through your feet and bring yourself up to stand. And if you're a bit far away, let go of your hands from the chair and stand back in your feet. And feel your body. Moving closer to your chair, we're going to take ourselves into a slight backward bend now. We're going to begin by stretching and opening through the front of the legs, see how that's going. So you're as close as is right for you. And then our right leg is going to step back, but this time the toes are on the floor and the heel isn't. But we can take the foot down if we wish to. You can press your toes into it or you can push your heel back a little bit, but our primary aim is to push the pelvis forward. So we need a two-way stretch of the pelvis going forward and the foot going back, whether it's the heel or the toes pressing, whichever you find is appropriate for you. Can I find some length and stretch through the front of my thigh? And that means opening through the front of the hip and as if someone has their hand in your sacrum is pressing your pelvis forward. Now, if that feels safe for you, did you have your feet wide enough apart? Because if you have your feet too close, that will make you feel more unstable. So with that sense of a lengthening through the front of your right leg, if you choose to, you can stay holding on with your left arm and you could send your right arm up and open the front of your body even more. If you don't want your arm up, you could have your hand on your shoulder and lift your elbow or you could have both hands behind your head and lift your elbows. And 
and then slowly releasing and then stepping your foot back. Good hip width apart between your feet. Well done. As you pause, noticing whether you really know, can you find that difference in the two sides of the body? So we're going to take the other leg back. So it can either be toes on the ground or heel on the ground. So the pelvis is still facing forwards. And we begin to feel as though we're pressing the pelvis forwards as the heel or toes press backwards. We have that sense of lengthening through the front of the body. Breath is flowing. And if we choose to, we can keep one hand on the chair and send the other arm up and open through the front of the body. Or if we have our balance, we could interlace the hands, place them behind the head, push the head into the hands, and then lift the elbows up safely. But if you feel wobbly, please use your chair. And then softly, slowly releasing and stepping the foot back. Maybe we've got a bit of a lengthening through both sides now. We're going to move back again and we're going to repeat our lengthening of the back. And then if you choose to, a little bending of the back. So I'll show you what we're going to do. Moving way back probably. Arms can be straight or you can hold lower down. You're bending the knees and sending the buttocks out to stretch the back first. So this is a flat back mostly. If you like that and you want to increase the stretch, then you round the back by pulling the bottom down like you're doing cat. And then you push the buttocks away, but you never straighten the legs. You could do. If you straighten the legs, you may get more stretch in the back. So being aware of what feels good for you. But when we come flat, we are stretching the buttocks back and bending the knees. And then you can breathe out and let the chest round and arch. Breathe in, stretch and flatten. Engage those abdominals. Breathe out, round and stretch once more. Breathe in, flatten. And then slowly walking yourself back up as you unroll to your chair and the center. Checking in, how do I feel? So your chair is possible to turn it around and let it face you. Now, if this is too high, if your chair is too high, then you may need to use um, a lower puffy or a stool and maybe this action isn't right for you to do today. Feet are hip width apart and if you're close to something you might want to use that for a little bit of balance <laughs> if you, but if you feel it's too unstable to take this next action which is lifting your leg up onto the chair then please avoid it. Alternatively you could lean forwards to your chair and then step, although ideally we don't touch the chair to get. We want our feet about hip width apart. I want to notice what our body's feeling like. So what's it like in your lower back? What's it like at the curve of your neck? Do I have little curves there? Do I have excessive curves there? What's going on? Am I standing more with weight to the front of my feet? Am I standing with the weight in the back of my feet? Outside edge, inside edge, what am I doing? How am I standing? And can I find a way of rebalancing myself? And that's what this is about. So if it is safe and you want to, noticing your pelvis facing the chair, are you able to lift one leg up and put the foot on the chair? Still having your pelvis facing the chair. If that's too dodgy, then if you've got a low stool handy or a settee near a wall or something that you could put your foot up on. We're still using the standing leg, and we want to allow the pelvis on the leg that's bent to drop, dropping it down. So I'm going to switch legs so you can see more easily. And we want to let this pelvis sink down as we stay centered. And then we bring our fingertips to the shoulders, find the balance, elbows out to the side, and little circles with your elbows. Still breathing. And then the other way. 
Feel strong in your center. I'm standing on one leg, but I'm balancing because I've got the other leg up. Then when you're ready, if you're ready, stretch both arms up. Be strong and tall. As you breathe in, stretch the arms up and drop that sitting bone, that pelvis on that side down. Find a stretch through that side of the body. So the pelvis side of the body is going down as the arms go up. And then slowly releasing the arms and the leg and come back to balance and stand. Observing all that you notice about that side of the body that you've just worked with. What it feels like in your lower back, shoulder, neck, how does it feel? Do you feel balanced that side? And we're ready to take it to the other side. So safely for you, if it is safe to do, and don't do it if it's not, put the foot up. Check that you're letting that sit bone drop down. You're still in your balance, as if you were standing on both legs. And then fingertips can come to shoulders. Elbows can go out to the side. And we take little circles with our elbows or shoulders. Feeling strong through the center of the body. Still looking straight forward. Don't look down. Encourage yourself to look forward or even up, but I don't suggest you look up here. You might knock yourself off balance. When you've done that forward and backwards several times in each direction, find your strength through that standing foot. And if it's safe, take those arms straight up. Let that pelvis drop on the side of the leg that you've got up on the chair and feel that length. So arms are going up as the pelvis sinks on that side of the raised leg. Feel the engagement through the center of your body. Feel the back of the neck long. Feel the space in the lower back, particularly on that side. And then when you're ready, deep breath in, and as you breathe out, release the arms, release the leg, and stand. Notice how you stand, feeling the two sides of the body. And then you may want to place a hand in your lower back another hand at the back of your neck and just see if you feel more balanced than you did when you started. Am I more in my body? Has my spine got comfortable curves where my hands are? And then you can let go of your arms and feel yourself standing. Okay. So if you'd like to, you can turn your chairs around once more. If they were turned, if they weren't turned, then you can simply come to sit back down on top of them. So make sure you have all the supports that you require. And observing yourself as you come to sit. Noticing anything that's still talking to you. What's your breath doing? Taking your right arm down beside you. You can either have the left hand across on the outside of the right leg or the left hand down holding onto your chair. And bring the right fingertips to the shoulder. Lifting the elbow gently forward if that feels all right for you. And then extending the arm softly up towards the sky. If that's uncomfortable, then you can either leave your hand on your head or the fingertips on your shoulder. Bring your first finger to the middle section of your thumb and leave the other three fingers straight. So the first finger comes to the middle section of your thumb and the other three fingers are straight. Deep breath in. As you breathe out, lean over to the left, stretching through the side of the arm that's lifted. You can let the head drop if it wants to as well. Keep the right sit bone firmly down and breathe into your ribs on the right side. So remember, you could have your hand across if it helps you to fix. 
Feel that breath moving into your ribs on the right side. And our hand gesture, Medha Prana Kriya Mudra, is helping that. So you might release the mudra in your right hand and see what the breath is like. Did that diminish the ability to breathe into your ribs? And then softly returning to the center and letting that arm come down. Take a moment to experience your body. Moving over to the other side, either the hand, left hand down the side, right hand beside or across, whichever you prefer. And bring the fingertips of the left hand to your shoulder. You don't have to touch the shoulder. And here you can put your, your first finger to the middle of your thumb as a gesture. Breathing in, stretch up. As you breathe out, lengthen that side of the body. So you're tipping over the arm gently over the top of the head. Remember, you can have your hand on your head if you prefer. Feel that length through the side. Find your breath in the ribs on the left-hand side. Feel the breath in the front, the side, and the back of those ribs on the left. If you wish to check it out, you could release the hand gesture and continue to breathe. If you find it's less, you could bring that first finger back to the middle of the thumb. And breathing in. As you breathe out, come back down. Noticing the sensations on the two sides of your body and breathing. Expanding into the sides of the ribs. So that was the second of our meditation mudra gestures that we did just then. And we used it with a... Uh, Asana with practice to assist us. So making sure you're comfortable and if you wish to, you could use your cushions behind you and roll them over to support your lumbar. And today we're going to work with a different mudra, Adhara mudra, a gesture of support and this is a gesture for abundance, for receiving abundantly. And it begins by bringing our palms together. And then keeping the palms fingertips together, I'm going to move towards the camera so that you can see this more clearly. So we have our hands in prayer and then we bring them down in front of us. And it's like opening one of those magnetic wallets. You take the two strings and you simply pull it open. So the fingertips are staying together, the wrists are staying sort of together, and the outside edge is all still together. And you simply pull your thumbs apart. So it's from Anjali Mudra, pull it apart, open your purse, open to receive abundance. It's closed, it's pulled open. And we can rest our receptacle for Adhara Mudra in front of us, perhaps at our midriff navel or lower down, whatever's comfortable for you. So it's a gesture of abundance. Let's sit for a moment and experience. You may want to close your eyes or drop your gaze. Noticing how your breath moves. So the breath will tend to direct towards the midriff and up for this one, towards Samana by you, which is uh, Manipura Chakra, the 
City of Jewels. Feeling that sense of willing to accept abundance. A gesture of support that we have what we need. And we can have more of what is good for us. And we're welcome and we're open to receiving it. And in our yoga practice, in our lives, we work well. Consistency. We are thoughtful. We have honesty, integrity. And repetition is so vital in practice. We repeat all the things that maintain us and support us and grow us physically, spiritually, emotionally. And we are able to let go of those things which no longer serve us. And then we take time out to practice meditation or relaxation, restorative, we begin to know what it is that no longer serves us. Our own innate intelligence, our inner wisdom tells us what we need to let go of. And some of those habits can be very hard to let go of. We're open, abundant, abundance in giving and receiving. So easy to give. Sometimes it is not so easy to receive. We learn to receive with grace. So we're open to receiving. Check through your body as you rest here. What's tense? What could let go? And then you can draw your palms back together, closing your purse. And let yourself gently interlace your fingers, opening the palms out and resting them down. So the fingers are slightly interlaced. They're not closed, just lightly interlaced and the palms then open, face down. Or you can rest them across your chest if you prefer. And this gesture of openness and receiving gives us an opportunity to breathe a little more deeply than Adhara Mudra. Welcome the expanse, the energy from outside, the vitality that we need to receive from the breath. And as we give our breath back, nature, the green things in the world take up our carbon dioxide. So you might think of a favorite plant or flower, bush or tree, and have an image of that in your mind's eye. And feel its energy. Perhaps imagine that it's giving off, as it is, oxygen for you personally to breathe, your own private supply from your favorite plant or tree. And feel that wonderful ability of your body to absorb the oxygen and take it and let it travel to every cell of your being.
and releasing your hands, let them rest palms down or palms up. I'm going to take one more practice, empowering practice, bringing our energy life force to the fore. So with your left hand, palm is facing up, and you're going to put it into Inanna Mudra, which is bringing your first finger and thumb to touch the tips, and the other three fingers are straight. So that's your left hand, and that's resting palm up on your thigh. Then the right hand, we're making a flat palm, as if we're going to say stop and we're going to lift it up at roughly uh, fingertips level with forehead or eyes whatever feels comfortable for you so have it high enough in a roman salute and then we're going to say words and i'll say the words and you can repeat them after me i am the light of my soul i am bountiful I am beautiful, I am bliss, I am, I am. I am the light of my soul, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am bliss, I am, I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am, I am. Saying it together three more times. Hold those arms strong. Find your strength. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am, I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am, I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am, I am. Slowly lowering your arms. Bring the hands to Anjali Mudra. Hari Om Tat Sat. Namaste.